Hello friends, it's me, your trusty guide in the world of knowledge at Crony Corner. Do you feel that your days have turned into an endless cycle of apathy? Has your world lost all its colors and nothing brings joy anymore? Is it getting harder each morning to crawl out from under your warm blanket? Does this sound familiar? Today we'll discuss such a complex and widespread topic as depression. But we won't dally, it's probably time to start. We all experience periods of sadness, doubt our accomplishments, and feel that the future doesn't promise us anything enjoyable. In such moments, we sometimes say that we're going through depression. However, as time passes, our life returns to normal, the world regains its colors, and we feel a surge of energy and strength. Isn't this a reason to be proud that we were able to cope with depression on our own? So, all these dissatisfied people who just lie around, do nothing, and take antidepressants are simply weak-willed creatures lacking willpower, right? In reality, it turns out, overcoming depression isn't that simple. The reality, as always, is more complex than it appears at first glance. Depression is often regarded with neglect and isn't acknowledged as a serious diagnosis, as in our perception. This word often simply associates with a bad mood. So what if a person is a bit sad? It's not a reason to treat it so frivolously. I agree with this viewpoint. Depressive disorders exist in a myriad of forms. Depression is often mistaken for a period of grief after losing loved ones, an existential crisis, or just a bad mood. Some of these states may pass independently and aren't a diagnosis at all, others require psychological assistance. But all of this isn't depression, and it should not be ruled out that such a person is just facing hardships. But real depression can be identified by several characteristic signs. On an emotional level, a person suffering from depression experience is the so-called depression triad extremely low self-esteem, a low opinion of other people, and a very pessimistic outlook on the future. Furthermore, the person feels complete exhaustion of strength and an inability to experience any positive emotions. The problem is that someone who has never experienced such a thing is simply unable to understand what's happening to the sufferer. This is another reason why many aren't inclined to consider depression as something serious. Nevertheless, it is the most common mental disorder in the world, and any of you could encounter it. Therefore, I believe it's worth knowing about depression in advance, so that if necessary, you can provide help to a person, rather than turn away from them. And don't think that this is just a trendy disease for weak-willed hipsters. Cases of depression have been known since the time of Hippocrates. Until the 20th century, the term melancholia was widely used, which is very close to the modern understanding of depression. The first scientific papers on melancholy appeared in the 16th century. It was then that another important feature of this disease was discovered. Melancholia was long called the royal disease. Why do you think, unaware of this? The first researchers of depression noted the significant influence of some psychosocial factors on the development of the disease, in particular, loneliness. Therefore, when signs of depression occur, such as loss of interest in life, decline in strength, constant bad mood, decreased concentration and attention, it's important to see a specialist. You should not ignore these symptoms and hope that everything will pass by itself. This may be not only a mental disorder but also a symptom of serious physical illnesses. Another important point I would like to emphasize is that no mental illness is a sign of weakness or laziness. Depression is a serious medical condition that requires professional intervention, and it's nothing to be ashamed of. The help of professionals, including psychotherapists and psychiatrists, can be invaluable in the recovery process. Regarding medication, many antidepressants can have side effects, including the intensification of depression symptoms. If you're taking such drugs and notice a deterioration in your condition, it's important to tell your doctor. They may adjust the dosage or switch you to another medication that will work better for you. Of course, self-diagnosis and self-treatment in the case of suspected depression are not recommended. 
it's necessary to turn to a professional medical worker who can correctly diagnose and prescribe appropriate treatment. Although endogenous and psychogenic forms of depression are the most common, each type has its own characteristics. Psychogenic depression occurs in response to external factors that can affect a person's emotional state. These can be both single and recurring events, from moving and conflicts with loved ones to difficulties at work or problems with the acceptance of social norms. People suffering from psychogenic depression may experience loss of concentration, difficulty in solving intellectual tasks, constant internal tension, and anxiety. They often worry about their well-being and the well-being of their loved ones, feel worthless, and lack motivation to overcome difficulties. In extreme cases, they may attempt to end their own lives, even if it is more of a desire to draw attention rather than a true intention. However, it's important to understand that even if psychogenic depression usually manifests itself in not the most severe form, a person will still not be able to cope with the disease on their own. One of the insidious features of depression is the belief that no one wants or can help. Don't let this disease convince you of this. There are always people ready to help, including professional psychologists. At the same time, endogenous depression is perhaps the most dangerous type of this condition. It can arise suddenly, without apparent reasons or external factors. It's not entirely clear what causes it, but typically it's associated with a malfunction of the nervous system. Some suggest that the problem may be related to a biological deficiency of serotonin, but there are no convincing scientific evidence for this hypothesis. Finally, remember that your loved ones may experience depression, and they will not always be ready to admit it. Sometimes the increase in the number of people with depression is explained not by an increase in the incidence rate, but by an increase in the attention people pay to their mental health. It's also interesting to note that women suffer from depression twice as often as men, and it's not entirely clear why. It may be related to biological predisposition, but this has not been definitively determined. Perhaps the difference in the frequency of depression diagnosis between men and women is due to cultural factors. Women are likely to seek help from a doctor more often, while men may prefer to suffer in solitude. Endogenous depression often manifests more severely than psychogenic and can be classified as moderate or severe. If a person suffers from moderate depression, without treatment it can quickly progress to a severe stage. You might hear that in the US, a large number of people take antidepressants, and now almost 1 in 10 residents of this country are being treated for depression. Why then is this diagnosis much less common in the rest of the world? It turns out that Americans are more depressed than everyone else. In fact, this is related to a phenomenon called overdiagnosis, which is more related to legal aspects than medical ones. In the US, if a patient comes to a psychiatrist and they have symptoms that allow a diagnosis of depression, the doctor is usually obliged to make that diagnosis. Otherwise, the doctor may encounter legal problems. It also simplifies reporting on the work done. Here is the diagnosis. Here is the prescribed treatment. But don't think this system is better. Antidepressants are very specific drugs. They don't improve mood in and of themselves. Their effectiveness depends on the severity of depression. If a healthy person starts taking antidepressants, the strongest effect they might feel is nausea or, in some cases, suppressed appetite. But their emotional state will not change. Here a paradoxical rule works. The more severe the depression, the more effective the drugs against it. There are many different antidepressants, more than 35 chemical groups that each, in its own way, affect the level of neurotransmitters such as serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine. The deficiency of these substances is considered the main biological cause of depression. Additionally, antidepressants can have a sedative or stimulating effect regulate sleep and eating behavior. However, due to the individuality of each person, selecting the right treatment plan can take a long time, and without the help of a psychiatrist, choosing the right drug is almost impossible. What's more, 
antidepressants don't start working immediately. In the first month, the patient may not notice any changes at all, or worse, notice only side effects. There are prejudices in the world regarding psychiatrists, possibly due to national history, when psychiatric clinics were associated with alcoholics, drug addicts, and patients in straight jackets. Moreover, obtaining an official diagnosis from a state clinic can lead to lifelong problems. On the third stage of treatment, the focus is on overcoming negative thoughts. People suffering from depression often tend to have a negative perception of themselves, the world around them, and their future. They may think they are unworthy of love or success, that the entire world is against them, or that their future is inevitably bleak. Within the framework of cognitive behavioral therapy, patients learn to recognize these negative thoughts and realize their irrationality. Then they learn to replace these negative thoughts with more realistic and positive ones. On the fourth stage, the goal is to reframe the patient's mindset. Depression causes people to focus only on the negative sides of their life, ignoring the positive aspects. The role of the psychotherapist is to help correct this imbalance. On the fifth and final stage, patients work on developing problem-oriented skills. They learn to manage stress, resolve conflicts, and interact with other people more effectively. The goal of this stage is to help patients develop skills that will help them prevent relapses of depression in the future. Finally, on the final stage of treatment, the psychotherapist works on the patient's score and negative beliefs about themselves. This includes beliefs that were laid in childhood and that form the way a person perceives the world around them. Beliefs like I am not respected, I am a failure or I am doomed to remain lonely are typical deep ideas that the psychotherapist strives to correct. This is just a simplified and generalized description of the treatment process, but it gives a general idea of how therapy works. In conclusion, the treatment of depression involves a combination of pharmacotherapy and psychotherapy. Lifestyle change is also important, including regular physical exercise, a healthy diet, ensuring adequate sleep, and avoiding alcohol and drugs. It's important to remember that every person is unique, and what works for one person may not work for another. Therefore, the most effective treatment is usually individual and requires careful planning and adjustment. Finally, I would like to share not the most pleasant news. The minimum duration of depression treatment is usually quite long, and endogenous depression is not fully curable, as the mechanisms of its occurrence are still not fully understood. However, antidepressants and psychotherapy can lead to a stable state of remission. Finally, for the prevention of depression, it is important to follow simple rules. Spend more time outdoors in sunny weather, lead an active lifestyle, maintain close social ties with people close to you, and ensure a balance between work and rest. This may sound banal, but statistically, these measures can significantly reduce the risk of falling into a deep pit of depression. I wish you strong mental health and all the best.